Welcome to the Bitcoin Basics podcast with your hosts, Faris and Gordon from CoinCompass.com, enabling you to safely buy and securely store your Bitcoins. All resources are in the show notes and description, including our disclaimer. Visit BitcoinBasicsPodcast.com to subscribe and discover other free content. Okay, go for it. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Bitcoin Basics Podcast. Today is the 23rd of May. The price of Bitcoin is $37,300. The block high is $684,614. I am here with my co-host, Gordon. Gordon, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks, Ferris. Um, excited to get into today's question, although it's a question I get often. Uh, what is a hardware wallet? So before we get into it, because there are different kinds of wallets, you know, there's online wallets, software wallets, hardware wallets, paper wallets, metal wallets, and everything in between. Why, well, firstly, what is a Bitcoin wallet? Why do we need one? So a Bitcoin wallet is essentially a means of how you control your Bitcoins, how you send your Bitcoins. Um, best example would be a bank account. I can give my bank account number to anyone and they can send me money into my bank account. That doesn't mean they have access to my account and, and can um, pay bills or send money off of that. So Bitcoin wallet works in the same way in that if I have access to a Bitcoin wallet, it means I can give you, Gordon, my um, public keys, which means you can send Bitcoin Satoshis to my wallet, but you don't have access to my private keys. My private keys allows me to then send my Bitcoin Satoshis to someone else. So what a Bitcoin wallet does is allows you, the user, to manage the Bitcoins in your wallet. So it's like managing dollars in your bank account. It's the same thing with a Bitcoin wallet. It gives you control of how to not just receive, but send those Bitcoins or Satoshis. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe, like, and share so we can find others like yourself. Excellent explanation, Ferris. That was very good. Uh, so for a, from a technical point of view, there are actually three things that a Bitcoin wallet, and this is a software wallet or a hardware wallet, and the three things, as Ferris mentioned, to store and manage keys. So Ferris mentioned the public key, which we can just call a Bitcoin address. Let's use it simply. Uh, and your private keys. So it does three things. One is to store and manage your keys, and it does that for you automatically. The second thing is it signs transactions, and that's a fancy way of saying spending Bitcoins, using your private key to say, yes, I own this Bitcoin address, I can spend Bitcoins. And the third thing is to generate new keys. So when you need a new Bitcoin address, you want to receive, um, you should always not reuse addresses, uh, create a new address. Uh, the Bitcoin wallet handles that for you. So it does all that, and software wallets do that. So whether it's on your desktop computer, your mobile phone, or your hardware wallet, a wallet will do that. But what's the difference between a software wallet and a hardware wallet? Now, we're not going to go too much into it, but basically we want to get across you know, the advantages and the enormous um, implications of having a hardware wallet. And by the way, that's not to say that software wallets are insecure. We're just saying a hardware wallet is more secure than a software wallet. So I suppose here, again, it comes down to terminology. When you think hardware wallet, um... Well, technically a computer is hardware, but it holds a desktop wallet or a software wallet. So when in the industry people say hardware wallet, what they're referring to is a way of getting your Bitcoins um, private keys into something that you can hold, not connected to the internet. That would be the way I look at it and the easy way I'd explain it to people. Um, there are different ways of doing this. So for example, there is a cold storage device. These are similar to a ledger and a treasure where you plug them into a computer, um, you then can move your Bitcoins into a Bitcoin wallet created on that ledger or Trezor. So it's like a USB. So that USB has a Bitcoin wallet. You move your Bitcoins into that USB, you unplug it from your computer, there you go. They can't get hacked into um, because they're not actually connected to a computer, um, to the internet. Um, so for example, if you have a software wallet, this is one where it's on your computer. Now, if you install accidentally some malware, that can find that and steal your Bitcoins. Um, so the trade-off there is if you need very quick access within you know seconds or just a minute to your Bitcoin wallet, that's where you would have it on your mobile phone 
or on a desktop, um, the trade-off there is security, not as secure as the cold storage device like a USB where you can keep it locked in a safe and it's offline. An even more secure version of that is a metal card or a paper wallet. So these are where a metal card is where the private keys are basically put into like metal tags. Think of like what dog tags have, you know, in the military. Um, so with those, you're physically typing them in. You're not transferring them across on a computer or a device. So much more secure. Um, but if for some reason you wanted to send those Bitcoins um, and need a quick access to them, it's not that fast to use. But so again, high security, low convenience. So when it comes to what kind of wallets you're going to use, it depends on your use case. So, you know, we do not advise you keep large amounts of Satoshis or Bitcoins on a mobile wallet or a desktop wallet. They're just, even though they're convenient, they're open to hacking and theft. Excellent, Faris. And I just want to make one small clarification. I wouldn't say a paper wallet or a meta wallet is more secure than a hardware wallet. Uh, you're right, it's not connected to the internet. But uh, if you are in an area or your physical location has many people around or whatever, that may be insecure because someone might be able to find it and steal it. But the key point that Faris mentioned is they're not connected to the internet. And that has enormous implications. So if you're comparing your Bitcoin wallet on your phone versus your Bitcoin wallet on your hardware device, as Faris said, uh, there's no operating system. So a hardware device isn't running Mac OS. It's not running Windows 10 or Linux or anything like that. Um, it's running a specialized operating system. So there's no apps. So there's no danger of other applications or your operating system or even your manufacturer getting to that. So that's sort of the main difference. I would say there's two other sort of minor ones. And that is that um, even though uh, an attacker may be able to get to your mobile phone across the internet. You know, you download an app or visit a website or your computer. There's actually no way for an attacker online to get to your hardware wallet, even if it was plugged into your computer. So they would need physical access to your hardware device. And the last one, and I would probably say the most important one, is that your private keys do not leave your device. And I'll say that again, your private keys do not leave your Bitcoin wallet. The beauty of that is that your private keys on a hardware wallet stay what is called a secure element or secure enclave. And that's kind of like a hidden CPU. And we've discussed that before. But basically, the massive advantage of that is that when, you, when it's time to set, spend your Bitcoin um, with, with a hardware wallet, even if it's connected to your computer, your hardware, your private keys don't leave the wallet. Whereas with a desktop or mobile wallet, actually, you know, apps and basically everyone sort of has access to, potentially access to your private keys. So that's a that's a huge advantage. Um, and, and sorry, one more thing, Faris, and because a lot of people have asked me this question as well. Well, I've got a hardware wallet. Why do I, let's say a ledger. I've got a ledger wallet. Why do I need to download a ledger wallet software? So I've got a ledger physical device, but now it's telling me I need to go to the ledger website download their software wallet and their software wallet is running on my desktop computer. Why do I need to have both? And I'll answer my own question first. And that is um, that uh, your private keys are on the hardware device. So in order to spend your private keys, there needs to be some bridge between your Bitcoin wallet and the hardware device. So what happens is when you wanna spend your Bitcoin, the hardware wallet software, like the Ledger software, it doesn't actually know what your private keys are, doesn't have access to your private keys. So if your computer is completely riddled with viruses and malware, it can't get to it. The only thing that is passed between your software Ledger wallet on your desktop computer and your hardware device is the individual transaction. So that's the beauty of the hardware wallet. It keeps your private keys safe. Oh, thank you, Gordon. That was better answer than me for once. What do you mean for once? <laughs> uh, so it, it wouldn't be a podcast if I didn't get the last word. And the last word, Faris, is a PSA. Um, number one, buy from your manufacturer. 
do not buy from uh, crypto wallets hardware are us.com because there's a likelihood that they've actually opened that hardware device and they could potentially write down the 24 words, your, your backup seed, repackage it, and then on sell it to you. So buy directly from the manufacturer. If you're going to buy from the manufacturer in your own country, they have resellers. So go to the official website and see their reseller list and buy it from one of them. Number two, your 24 words backup seed, which you need to use to restore if you ever lose your hardware wallet, is generated when you first set up your device. So a lot of scams are actually if someone buys it from eBay or cryptohackers.com or whatever like that, they actually open their hardware device and they find that, oh, the 24 words already filled in for me. Well, the hacker has basically copied those 24 words and as soon as you uh, start using it with Bitcoin, they'll basically steal your coins. So the 24 words are generated when you set up the device. So if they're already there, it's a scam. Um, three is set up a pin. So if someone gets access to your hardware device, it's not the end of the world. But if you set up a pin or what is called a 25th password, even the most sophisticated hacker in the world with enough time and enough resources may be able to crack a hardware device if they have physical access to it for a couple of months. But if you set up a pin or a 24 word, uh, 25th seed, that basically completely prevents against that. Um, and the very last one, Faris, is uh, it's something called a $5 ranch attack, which I think is actually um, a bit of a concern nowadays with prominent people who have a lot of Bitcoin and personalities. And, you know, if someone knew that you had a lot of Bitcoin and they came to your house or, or whatnot, now, this may seem paranoid, but I think it's probably a reality. Or you're going through airport security and they want you to unlock your Bitcoin wallets. There is something called a hidden wallet or what is called plausible deniability. So if you've got a hardware device, you've got your normal wallet, your normal public wallet. But what you can do is you can set up a hidden wallet. So your hidden wallet has all your funds in it, has your $100,000 worth of Bitcoin in it. And that is unlocked with a specific pin. But your normal public wallet, which has $50 or $100 in it, is with another pin. So if you are ever exposed and a hacker or a criminal or the TSA or airport security, we could say they're one and the same. But if they actually asked you to unlock that, you just give them your normal public one, which has $100 in it. So that is an enormous uh, feature that every single person should use. So, Faris, I've gone on long enough. Uh, we had a question last episode about what happens if the manufacturer goes out of business. What happens if I've got my hardware wallet and, you know, it's no longer available and the business is bankrupt? Um, well, the answer to that question, I just refer people to that podcast, Gordon. Yeah, as long as you got your 24-word seed, you're fine. You can restore that even with another manufacturer's hardware wallet or mobile device. So. Keep your 24 words set safe. I would say your 24 words, your backup phrase is actually more important to protect that than it is your actual hardware wallet. So if you're new to Bitcoin or you already own some Bitcoin and you have or have not set up a hardware wallet and need some assistance, this is something that we actually do for our customers. Please go to bitcoinbasics.help. And you will find a sheet where you can get in touch with us and we can assist you with setting up hardware wallet, moving your Bitcoins from an exchange into the hardware wallet, and as well as giving you some extra security advice to keep your Bitcoin safe for the short, medium, or long term. Excellent. Thanks, Faris. And to all those podcast listeners, we have a YouTube channel. So head across to bitcoinbasics.help. We have links to all our social media and podcast platforms there. And if you're watching on YouTube, we have a podcast. Head across to bitcoinbasics.help and subscribe to our podcast so that we can get this educational content to other people like yourself. Thanks, Faris. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. It's a pleasure again. Thanks for watching or listening. Please visit coincompass.com slash free to register to our socials and discover other free content. Subscribing, liking, and following helps this content remain ad-free. Until next time. Disclaimer. 
Any content provided by Coin Compass is for educational and informational purposes only and is not investment, legal, tax, or any other professional advice. A qualified professional should be consulted before making any financial decisions. Coin Compass will at times recommend certain products, services, and technologies, but these are opinions based upon our own or podcast guests' experience and not endorsements. We take no liability for out of date or inaccurate information, software bugs, manufacturing errors, technology misuse, or issues involving third parties. Visit coincompass.com for more information and please contact us.